Okay, I just vacated a seat in the front row, so <laughs> the, the quality of my answers is exponentially decreasing with, with the number of empty <laughs> seats in the front, so please come. Okay, so uh, yeah, just a couple of things. Uh, uh, um, I got the idea for all questions answered from, from Richard Feynman, uh, who had this tradition at Caltech in the 60s at the end of his classes, the last day of class, was uh, you, you could cut if you wanted to, but, it, uh, but if you came, he would answer any question that you had. And, and I thought that was a cool idea, so I started using it in my classes too. So now that I'm retired, uh, I, I, I do it whenever, I, uh, whenever I'm asked to give a talk somewhere else. And uh, the questions almost never repeat themselves, and so it's always fun for me, and it seems that's a good way that I can also uh, customize uh, to, uh, to, to what you want to hear. Uh, uh, what, a couple other things. One is uh, uh, I'm, I'm very glad to have known David Sheraton for more than 40 years. And, uh, uh, and uh, you, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, <coughs> I, I uh, was surprised that the, that the Davis Center has been building DC, but I thought DC stood for David Sheraton. <laughs> Uh, one other thing I want to I want to give some homework to the people, the mathematicians here in Waterloo, because I'm you know, I'm at this wonderful Delta Inn, where my room is terrific. But the, but it, but, it, but it's funny because if you go on the stairway, uh, th there was a really nice sign on the stairway that says you know, uh, uh, good for you for taking the stairway because you, you know it, 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 uh, you're. Uh, uh, you're saving this many calories, and, and, and so there's, there's 14 steps per floor, and uh, you're on the ninth floor, and therefore uh, uh, the, uh, the number of steps that you have is, is, is such and such, which was nine times 14, okay? Now, this is an off by one error, because you're going from the ninth floor to the first floor, and so, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it should have been eight, eight by 14. So, so, so somebody you know, ought, ought to straighten them out. Uh, furthermore, <laughs> Now, the, the error gets more obvious when you get down to the second floor and you see the same, same sign on the second floor and it says, you know, okay, 28 steps to go. Uh, uh, um, and actually, the truth is that there's 21 steps to go because there, there, it, there's more steps between the second floor and the first floor, but it's still... So, um, but anyway, you know, I, I wanted to count them, so I went down, and it's an emergency exit only. <laughs> Do, do, you know, alarm will sound. Okay, so, so anyway, the, uh, but the, the, you know, the, the, the spirit was really good to have, uh, to, for people to save calories and get exercise, uh, but the math was uh, weak. Uh, okay, all right, now, so questions from, uh, uh, now I, I told Jeff not to tell me any of the questions in advance. Uh, I mean, it's much better for me to stumble and give a bad answer than, than for me to give a, a pre-canned uh, th thing that's really slick. Because you learn much more from, from, from my mistakes than, than from what I get right, so. Well, thanks, very much. thanks very much. I wanted to say that next to the Delta Hotel, there used to be an Epsilon Hotel, but people, <laughs> people thought the rooms were too small. <laughs> um, so, Uh, before we get started, uh, there are a bunch of students here from undergraduate algorithm CS341 and advanced algorithm CS466, so could you please stamp your hands and wave if you're in those classes? Okay, and, yeah. and, and move to the front. I mean, stamp your feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. So anyway, some of those are my students. So. Yeah. All right. So uh, we have a bunch of questions, and uh, um, uh, I thought I would ask some of these questions first, and then we'll turn it over to questions from the floor. So, uh, so here's one, and uh, this is from someone anonymous, and it says, uh, computer scientists often collaborate with others. What was the best collaboration experience you've had, and who was the most interesting person you ever worked with? Well, it I, I like the first part of the question very much uh, because you know, collaboration is a lot of fun. Uh, but the second question, 
I, 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 I tend to frown a little bit on questions saying who is the most interesting or what was the, mo the, the most fun thing, you know, because, uh, because uh, uh, well, the, the, natu the ob obvious uh, thing that people talk about is, you know, you ask a parent which is their favorite child or something like this. Uh, <laughs> So the, you know, it's really hard to compare uh, things in a linear dimension when they when there's so many dimensions going on. But okay, so collaboration, uh, I, it, it's kind it's kind of a funny thing that uh, there was w one person in my life who turned out to be the, the absolute the absolute best collaborator in the sense that when we got together, uh, we un we each. Uh, Understood each other's thoughts and 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 our strengths and weaknesses compensated for each other, so that one person would start a sentence and then you know the other would sort of know where he's going, but then I but then you know I'd get stuck and then then then, then he would say oh but but you can do this and and then he would go for a while and then he would get stuck and I could take it and and the two of us and his his name was Ed Bender and and I worked with him uh, we had we shared an office in Princeton for for a year. In 1968, and then he, he well he became a professor at uh, La Jolla, and and, and, and so and uh, wrote a book on artificial intelligence and everything. So so anyway, we worked together so well that uh, 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 we we uh, started shunning each other because it was too much of a responsibility. Every time we got together, we had to, we had to prove a great theorem. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, I mean, it, you know, we, we were still friends, but it was still too it, it, too draining to have have a coworker who was that good, you know, doing for the both of us. Uh, and uh, 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 the other per person that was extremely uh, uh, was was Bob Floyd, who 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 uh, we did our, our our work not in the, by sharing an office, but but uh, in, in the early days uh, by writing. Huge number of letters back and forth, and each each time, uh, uh, he, you know, he would have a letter that had such a beautiful theorem in it that I had to drop everything else and and do something better to, to send it back to him, and then and, and, and it kept kept going like that. And so, with that collaboration, we got the uh, uh, we could sort of get a feeling for what it must have been like in in the days that, he, that you read history of mathematics about how how people used to write letters to each other about ma about mathematics and you know Bernoulli would write to Euler and so on and 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 sort of we, uh, we really felt we were living something like that now of course uh, uh, letters uh, uh, you know we do you, you, we do tweets we do we do uh, Skype and so on and work work or work together uh, it's more like my, my interaction with uh, uh, with Ed Benner uh, but the um, uh, but but, but uh, I, I I certainly uh, uh, I, I, I I also told you about the downside which which, which means that that uh, it, it's not sustainable if you have too good a worker, a, a, a co-worker. So, so you, so you do it in, uh, in spurts. And, but each person uh, uh, can contribute uh, uh, a lot. Now, I, I, I know that in in biology, uh, uh, there are many papers that have more than a thousand authors. Uh, and and uh, that hasn't happened yet in computer science. But uh, the, but uh, how many single author papers do you see these days? Right? Uh, and and I, I I do think that there are uh, that there are some things that are better proved by yourself in a in a quiet room, uh, uh, and and with the you know with the, the music turned off. Um, uh, the, uh, but. Uh, uh, so I'm not saying uh, there one size fits all. Uh, there, there's, there's value in everything, but, I, but, I, but these big biology things, that that's not really collaboration. That's just, that, that's just respo responding to some, some formula for how they rate the quality of, of, of people by the number of publications, I think. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, um, so this is from Dan Brown who asked, um, how does doing research in computer science differ today from 50 years ago when you first started? How does re re research in computer science d differ today? Well, today we, ha uh, uh, we have uh, 
uh, computers that we that, that will do do things for us uh, and video. I, 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 I mean, okay. Uh, let me count the ways. Um, no, there are hundreds of ways. But 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 for example, um, <clears throat> that year when I was in Princeton, uh, how did I, I? I wanted to find a good way to draw a. A, uh, uh, what's called a truncated octahedron. This is the. This is a, 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 a beautiful uh, polytope that vertices correspond to the permutations of four elements, and, and, I, and I knew I wanted to put picture of this in in my book, uh, but I didn't know how to a, a good way to do it. So. Uh, Computer graphics. Well, what did we have? We had a Calcomp plotter. This was a machine that would you, you could send it instructions saying move up, move down, move left or right, and and, and uh, you, you put a pen in there and, and it would and go step by step by step. And 20 minutes later, you had a picture, um, and then then I could look at it. So so I so I programmed my computer uh, uh, to draw a, a dozen. Uh, uh, Pictures of the uh, of this polytope, uh, you know, from random perspectives, and, and then I sent it to the Calcom plotter. Uh, the next day, I could look at the at, at, at what it did and decide, oh yeah, this one, this is the angle that I want to do. Uh, now that was the way we could get graphic output from computers 50 years ago, uh, and and obviously uh, we had lots of tools like that, but we also have tools like. Uh, maple, et cetera, for, you know, so I, 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 when, I, when I wrote volume one, I was using a slide rule to, uh, to calculate numbers, and, you know, I, I, I would get three-digit accuracy, and, and people still find errors in the, in the first edition uh, because I rounded badly when I, from my slide rule, and now they can calculate with a machine. Okay, so, so, so we, have, uh, uh, we have better tools then. Uh, we certainly, the picture is a lot different because we have a postdoc culture which didn't exist at all for, uh, until about, I don't know, 25 years ago. Um, I never knew what a postdoc was, you know, when I was a doc. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and of course, the, uh, the, the number of fields has, has grown so that uh, uh, no one person can uh, can know a great deal about uh, 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 about the whole of computer science, but but uh, but but you know you know little bits and so on. I I would say uh, 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 a lot of things are also the same, but um, but uh, I, I I tended to I tended to shy away from the things that everybody else is working on because I figure, okay, that's fine. It's nice that all those people are working on it, but everybody shouldn't be working on the same thing. Um, let me give you an example from biology instead of, of, of computer science. Well, you know, everybody wants to cure cancer, but, but nobody's doing research on dandruff. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, how many lives would be made happier if, 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 if there was uh, at least 1% of all Research in biology was devoted to making better cure for dandruff. It's not killing me, but I, but you know it's getting in on my clothes. Okay, so, <laughs> so the, the <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the analogy then to computer science is is not everybody should should, should be doing deep learning. <laughs> So, so here's a question about algorithms, like real actual algorithms. So it says, everybody knows who invented quicksort, Tony Hoare, and shell sort, shell. <laughs> but the inventor of heaps and heap sort never got much recognition, despite the fact that heaps are an incredibly useful data structure. Most people don't even know his name. Why is that, do you think? Uh, well, uh, let's see. So that would JWJ what? Williams. Williams. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, and that was one of the first algorithms I I corresponded to Bob Floyd about. In fact, um, and uh, I guess uh, 
uh, that was sort of his first and last work. Um, I don't know what happened to him, you know, or where he came from, or where he went to. Um, uh, he, 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 was, he was Welsh originally, he moved to Canada, lived in Canada the rest oh, yeah? of his life. So, as a Canadian, he deserves more credit. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, uh, and and I uh, I'm glad to see that the word uh, the word heap has has survived in his meaning, uh, although a lot of different people in different parts of computer science use use heap. You know, there, 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 there's heap for for what I tend to call the pool, uh, 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 the area of memory that hasn't been decided yet what it's going to be used for. Uh, uh, and so a lot of compiler people call that the heap. And, 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 and then we have, uh, 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 of course, uh, then, then we've extended what Williams had for, to Fibonacci heaps and, and, uh, and, and things like that. So it, um, but uh, it's a, it, I, I must say, uh, I probably used uh, uh, that 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 data structure at least a dozen times so far this year. Yeah. Right. So uh, I think he deserves more credit. Yeah. 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 Um, so this comes from Dave Tompkins here uh, in our School of Computer Science. He says, in literate programming, you extol the use of macros. And could you tell us a little bit more about why you like macros? Well. It, it's not macros so much. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I promised I, I, I was going to repeat the question, but since you pronounced them so well on the uh, on, on the microphone, I guess I don't have to repeat the. Uh, uh, so so uh, uh, now when I used it, uh, the first system for literate programming uh, was. Uh, was called web and 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 I I I, I used it uh, to extend the capability of, of Pascal, uh, which was the language that I in which I wrote uh, the the first big version of Tech, um, and and uh, has nothing to do with the Pascal lectures by the way, which I'm giving tomorrow. <laughs> but this is this is Pascal programming language. Um, now uh, and and so. Uh, it, it was, it, and Pascal didn't have anything like the like the defined statements of of of, of C. Uh, there, therefore, uh, in order to raise the level of the language a little bit, uh, I, I, I needed uh, I, I need some equivalent in, in in this web, which which went on top of Pascal, and and uh, web was so, so the idea of of literate programming is that you write. That, that that you break the whole program into small chunks. Th think of web pages that are linked together, and 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 a, and a chunk would typically have a dozen lines of of English, a dozen lines of of Pascal of, of of formal code, in some language, and uh, and then and it's like hypertext that 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 you that you can click on one part of it and it'll t tell you what was in the other. Chunk or module that that uh, uh, that that goes there. Uh, now um, uh, that that was in the 80s, uh, and and later uh, it turned out that literate programming was a big win for uh, for, for for many reasons for writing program. Uh, uh, but instead of Pascal, it moved to C. So now I standard with. With, with with every Linux distribution, I think you you can get C Web it comes with it, uh, which is literate, literate programming where the where uh, your uh, you, you, your your modules start out with English text uh, or whatever language you like, and then the, then the uh, in, informal text, and then then the formal text, which is in this case in C. Now C has a well that has a preprocessing language, which does call macro. But but it's but really the the the, the way these modules work, it, it turns out to be uh, uh, in most of the of the programs that I, that I work on it. Um, it turns out that that my modules themselves act as if they were macros in the sense that uh, it, it's like uh, it, I, instead of having subroutine calls, I just it, I, I just insert text 
And so, I, so I, it's not divided into subroutines, but it's divided into named parts of, of my literate program. But those parts don't have, you don't have to, have, they don't have to exist in the, inside the computer uh, with their own environment or stack or anything. You just insert, you say in this part of the program, now I, now I do a module called uh, in, in, in initialize the data structure. And then you go to another part of the program, another page, and it'll say, initialize data structures. Oh, yeah, allocate this array. Uh, and and uh, it, it might take, take you to another page and say, and by the way, also uh, uh, set up uh, the random number generator. Um, and so the uh, 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 part of the, the whole idea of of, of going from the, from the literate programming form of the program to the actual program itself uh, it is, is a matter of inserting pieces of text together but not calling subroutines. And so it, look, it operates very much like a macro in, in that sense. That, uh, uh, and, and you don't have to pay the, uh, the overhead for, uh, for, for putting putting parameters on, on a stack and things like this for subroutine. Um, now, uh, of course, there's also lots of use for subroutines and recursion and so on, but, but, but you're not forced to. So, so, it, so in, uh, uh, a lot of my programs, if I were writing them in, in, in some other language, if I was writing in Python, I was writing you know, even in C by itself, uh, I would have lots of little subroutines that would call each other. But in the literate programming form, they're, they're actually just parts of my code. That, and and, and uh, it, it, it reads well and, and, and computes well. <clears throat> um, I should mention, since uh, Don mentioned Pascal Lectures, that uh, for even more Knuth, you, c <laughs> you can attend uh, the Pascal Lectures, which are taking place Thursday night and Friday night here at the university. Um, so here's a question. Um, uh, areas go in and out of fashion. So uh, think of an example of VLSI. Everybody was doing that for a while, and now nobody's doing VLSI. Um, what are some results that you think might prove useful in the future but are not widely studied now? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. That's, very, that's a great question, too. Um, and, and I was trying to say earlier that that I I, I recommend going against fashion uh, to the extent you can do it without risking tenure or something like this. You know, uh, but but because uh, because of that very fact that that uh, everybody goes on the same bandwagon and and other things get. Uh, don't get the attention they deserve, and so there's definitely a, a, a you know, uh, VLSI was mentioned. I I, I must say, uh, uh, in, when, when I when be, first became a computer science professor in the '60s, <clears throat> computer science was was divided into three parts. It was like you know, Caesar's Gallic Wars. All Gaul is divided into partes tres. Well, this is. Uh, we had numerical analysis, artificial intelligence, and programming languages. And so uh, I, I, I remember the day when I, I went to a, a, a conference, um, Siam conference on something or other, and somebody asked, it, it was a mathematician's group, but somebody asked me, um, uh, you know, oh, what are the computer scientists, what do you do? And, and um, and they said, uh, uh, um, programming languages? Ah, uh, yes, I work on that. Numerical analysis? No. Artificial intelligence? No. Um, and, uh, 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 and so it struck me that, uh, that, that, that I didn't have a name for what I was most interested in. Uh, and so I had to make up that the next week or so. I decided, OK, I'll, 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 uh, uh, analysis of algorithms is what I'm interested in. And um, and uh, of course I didn't know what analysis of algorithms meant, but I but I had the word, and and so that was my working definition for a few years. Uh, what is analysis? Of, well, it's what I'm it's what I'm interested in. Um, but but now programming languages is what I got my reputation from. I was editor of the programming languages section of the 
ACM Communications and of the ACM Journal. Uh, and and uh, that was one third of computer science at that time. And, and now, now, now my, the, all the papers that I wrote uh, have been collected in, into eight volumes, uh, one of which is uh, uh, papers on computer languages, which, which, were the, which were the papers that I wrote about programming languages, mostly in the 60s, but also uh, uh, there was one from, from, from 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but but uh, uh, it's very interesting that uh, that of all these uh, all these eight volumes, uh, uh, n nobody volunteered to write a review of that book uh, in SIGAC News. So, so 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 for more than a more than a year, it was a, there was always a page of books waiting to be reviewed, and that, and my book on, on, on programming languages was was sitting there, and, and finally it, it's not, no longer on the page, and I don't think it's ever going to be reviewed. So, so yeah, you, they're definitely trend going. And in programming languages itself, uh, you know, the, the, big, the biggest theoretical problem to us now is about P versus NP. Well, at the beginning, in the early 1970s, uh, uh, number one or two on everybody's list was uh, w uh, w uh, about deterministic uh, l languages, uh, 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 and I can't even remember what the conjecture was, but uh, but uh, but it was finally solved five years later, and by a very ingenious construction by a man in France who I whose name I don't remember. And I never read his paper, um, so so I, you know I, I I myself am you know I changed uh, <coughs> uh, my, uh, my interest uh, even though at one point I would have thought this was the most important problem in computer science. All right, so th th there's now um, I I uh, about the things that are un uh, understudied. Uh, or, uh, or really deserve, uh, yeah, further development that, that aren't well known. I want to give a plug for for something I call family algebra. <clears throat> uh, so, in fact, Waterloo is, is 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 probably the best place to develop this. Now, um, now it, it's the it's the algebra of families of sets. So much of, of combinatorics and, and computer science deals with f families of sets. Uh, 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 we have some universe, and, 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 we, and we have various uh, subsets of that universe, and, no, and, uh, uh, and so we can, t we can say if I, have, if I have two families uh, of sets, uh, OK, so. Alpha is a family of sets, and then we have uh, <coughs> alpha. Um, of course, al alpha union beta w would be the set of all of all. Um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, well, what's the good notation here? Let's say uh, a. Um, uh, that is where a is. It's an element of alpha, or A is an element. Let's call it S. Um, okay, or S is an element of beta. So it's just the union, ordinary union. But then we can also talk about the um, uh, the, the square union, which is the the set of all um, <coughs> S S union T such that S is in A and S is in in beta. So this is the, this is these are the families of all of, of all unions. Um, the, uh, anyway, there, there's a. Uh, T is in beta. What? You have S union T on the left. So if you want T there. T. That's exactly good. I'm glad that uh, somebody was watching. <laughs> good. I would like to claim that I made that error on purpose in order to test. <laughs> But that's not true. Okay, now, and and, and so on. This would be the, uh, the the family of all intersections, and uh, uh, 
and 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 then we have unit. You know, we have the empty family. We have the the, the, the family of all. Uh, we have the family of sets that consist of only the empty set, uh, and there's and and so on. But we add to Boolean algebra. Uh, 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 also, things that are in, uh, relevant to combinatorics, and uh, and we have things like alpha inverse, which are the maximal which are the maximal families. So, so this would be all, all all the sets where x is in alpha and t contained in S imply. T equals S. <laughs> or, I mean, T in alpha and T. It, 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 in other words, it, it's all the largest, it, it's, all, it, it's all the families that, uh, uh, that have no subset. And, and uh, uh, there's alpha uh, this way, beta, which is the set of all. And this is a special case with respect to the power set of this operation, which says the families of all. Uh, the, uh, uh, it, the things that are the, the families of all sets that are contained in an element of beta or something like that, um, and 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 so you have uh, 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 about six operations adding to Boolean algebra, uh, and and this is something that combinatorists use a lot in special cases uh, over and over again, uh, and it turned out that uh, that now. Uh, uh, I, I, there are nice algorithms for dealing with families, families of sets. And so I have, I, 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 I like to represent families of sets by what I call a Z, by what's called a ZDD for historical reasons. But, it, but uh, 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 the, uh, the definition is very natural. If you suppose, I suppose the universe consists of A, B, C, D, E, and so on, that, then a ZDD is a structure inside a computer that, that asks a question, first of all, um, about the letter A and says, uh, here we have, uh, on the right-hand side, uh, on the left-hand side, uh, uh, we have all, all S in alpha. Let's say alpha is represented by this data structure. Um, Here's a set of all S uh, in alpha. Uh, that that a, a is is not in S. Okay, so so here we list all the ones that don't include the letter A. Now on this side, we have the family of all S um, such that A A followed by S. This is this is this guy um, is in alpha, and so the, so, so so here's here's all the all all, all the subsets uh, that include A, um, except we leave out the letter A, and, and, and so uh, we keep on going, and and at and but but a lot of these branches come together, that they actually equal each other. For, for example, the power set consi consisting of all. Of all elements would be A, B. In other words, either you have an A or you don't, but it doesn't matter. At the bottom, you have either false or true, standing for the. This is the family that's empty, and this is the family that contains only the empty set. So, so, so now there's a wonderful. Family of a set of algorithms that will work on ZDDs uh, for alpha and beta, and will find the ZDDs for for these various operations. That, you know all of the elements of alpha that aren't contained in in the set in the element of beta, and um, and so uh, uh, we, you know we can sit down now and calculate with uh, with families of sets, and and uh, there there's many open problems about that. The, the worst cases of these algorithms are not, not known. Uh, they, you know, they they run in in polynomial time in, ter uh, in, in, 
terms of the size of this data structure, and they, there's a certain blow up, uh, uh, but, but often it, it, it simplifies down. Um, but, so the worst case of the algorithms are known. But, but more important to me is that we don't know the, uh, how to solve the word problem for family algebra. I, I can take, there are many identities satisfied by these, by these operations. And the identities, you know, are, you know, we write down a formula that's true for all alpha and beta uh, and gamma, whatever the variables are. <clears throat> and, uh, and with Boolean algebra, we have a, a nice decision procedure telling us uh, if two Boolean formulas are, are equal or not. With family algebra, I have no idea if somebody gives me a new equation whether or not it's an identity for all family, families of sets. So, so uh, uh, th this is a, uh, an idea that was suggested uh, by a guy uh, uh, Couder, uh, I forget, Olivier, I, I think, uh, Couder in, in, in a few papers, um, uh, but it hadn't been picked up, and then I and I didn't have time to to, to put more than ten pages in, in, into volume four A about it. But I think this is really ripe for, uh, for, uh, for uh, development, and uh, and I can't think of another university in the world that would be uh, that would be, be better to uh, to do it than than here, we, because of the, you have a school of computer science, mathematics, and the, the people with the requisite skills are are, are all here. For, you know. <clears throat> well, thanks for your confidence yeah. in us. Um, <laughs> Uh, I should mention that uh, along with this idea, the, the famous union closed sets conjecture, which is uh, a, a conjecture about set families that's been open for a long time. So Google it. Oh, okay. U the union closed sets conjecture. So I expect a solution by tomorrow. Union closed. Um, <laughs> yeah, OK. OK, so I, I have many more questions, but we're in the interest of turning it over to members of the audience. I'll ask one more thing which is, what was your favorite Halloween costume? <laughs> My favorite? Halloween costume. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't, OK, so this is the, of the favorite things, OK. So what was a, I rephrased. No, actually. What was a Halloween costume you enjoyed as a child? Oh, oh no, no, oh, I, you, you don't allow it. Oh, now, now, fine. Yeah. Oh, OK, yeah, no, no. I. Yeah. I don't remember why, but we dressed up as as bats, and my my wife made a really great great costume for me. But but uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't remember why. Um, <laughs> okay, so you, I'm I'm 80 years old now. But uh, okay. okay, so I guess it's time for questions from the audience, and um, so there's three possibilities. There's a microphone right here at the front, and you can come down and form a line. Uh, I also have a microphone that I can hand to you if you're close to me. And finally, we have this thing, which apparently can be thrown. And I think Don is now going to demonstrate. No, he's not. OK. <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate. I take all the legal liability. <laughs> <laughs> so there. So there's a, mi a microphone that can okay. be thrown. So. Uh, do we have some questions? <laughs> There's a question there, so I Hello? hope the tech people are ready. Right here? OK. Uh, if you could go back in time and give yourself a piece of advice, what would it be? OK. Hi. If I could go back in time. And give yourself a piece of advice, what would it be? I still didn't get it. I, I, give yourself I, a piece of advice. Give yourself a piece. Give of myself advice. a piece of advice. What would, what, what would it be? Okay. Well, um, I've already given a few pieces of advice, like don't don't jump on every bandwagon. <laughs> but um, um, I, I would say uh, also uh, well. Uh, the, the, as a corollary uh, to that, um, uh, understand your own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the, uh, the, it, it, there, there, 
I, I said it at lunch today, I hate to repeat myself, but I said, life is a binary search. Uh, you, 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 you try something and you learn more about yourself as, as to what your, what your talents are. And so then you see, uh, you, uh, you, you see certain things and, and, you, and you think, you know, I, I, bet I, I bet I could do that well and it has your name on it. Uh, and then you see other things and you say, I, I have no intuition for that. I could, I, I could probably memorize it, but, but, I, but I doubt if I really understand it. And, uh, and, and so you learn these things over time. Like I learned early on that I wasn't good at throwing microphones. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, uh, I, I guess that's that's some advice. Don't, don't only listen to to the crowd, but listen to yourself. I've heard that that's actually not true because I've heard that you were actually a really good volleyball player. So, <laughs> so I think it's the same skill throwing microphones in volleyball. <laughs> okay, we have a question right here. As you mentioned, this is a really amazing school. We're surrounded by intelligent profs and staff and students, and a lot of people a lot of people here feel like they're not good enough to be here. Was there ever a time where you didn't feel like you were good enough? A lot of a lot of people feel that they aren't good enough to be here because they're surrounded by by so many bright people. Okay. Well, this was certainly true when I went to Caltech. Uh, uh, at at Caltech, one person in three was number one in their high school class. Okay, the, you know the, the, there were a few that were number two, yeah. um, <laughs> and and, uh, and 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 Richard Feynman said that he, uh, uh, well, he pointed this out that no matter how hard we try, uh, half of the students we admit are below the class average. <laughs> uh, or at, you know, at, at least you know, half of them are, are, are below the median. Okay, so so how do you how do you uh, how do you deal with that? Um, because the students who are are are, are uh, you know in the second half of a great group can can feel de depressed. If they would go somewhere else, they would they would stand out, and people would pay you know would. would, would Devote more time to them, and have, and so on, right? So, so, um, uh, so, so Feynman's solution was that for the teachers was to imagine that we have a lot in the back of the room, lots more seats filled with with, with people, because you know the teacher should should know that uh, that everybody in the in the classroom deserves special attention, uh, uh, by if they had gone to some other place. Caltech had a limited, you know, two two hundred freshmen every year. So, so um, uh, that's one that's one aspect of it. Um, uh, but you, you uh, but it, it, it's the thing about relative versus absolute. If you if you if you if you say that you have to be, uh, uh, you know, in the top ten, uh, the top one percent of the top one percent, uh, you'll never be you'll never be happy. But uh, but but if you're but, but if you say you know I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to be the best uh, for, for the talents I have, and I know that you know that I can throw microphones better than that guy. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Yeah. The Peter Buer. Are you for or against the go-to? <laughs> Well, uh, yes. <laughs> now, okay, pe pe people know what's involved because of, <laughs> because of this, but I, I should talk a little bit about go to. Uh, I, I gave a, um, uh, okay, so Edsger Dykstra was, was, was famous for writing a, a uh, short letter to the editor in the early 60s called Go-To Statement Considered Harmful. And, um, and 
he, he gave a lot of good reasons why, why it was true. And, and I gave a talk once in Eindhoven where he was a professor. And, and I was describing one of, I, I, the algorithm. I think it was early 70s, so it's probably algorithm for that's now called the Knuth uh, uh, Morris Pratt algorithm for, for finding a common, uh, you know, for, for finding a string in a, in a text. But anyway, I, I, I wrote it down in English on the board, step one, step two, step three, and I, at the end of step four, I said, go to step one. <laughs> you know, and, and Edgar said, I saw it coming. Said, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so now, <clears throat> um, I, I, and I agree that the go-to statement was harmful. However, uh, I, I also made a, um, a survey with, with my students. We, uh, uh, we went and studied computer programs that, that Stanford students and faculty were writing. Uh, uh, we went to all the wastebaskets on campus and, and, and looked at what the listings that were that we, in those days, People always, you know, they would punch cards and then they would take it to the computer and then they would get a listing of the program. And so we could figure, we could find out what people were actually doing, what, what programs they were, they were writing, and we wanted to find out. Um, and so we, st and, and then, then we took a random sample of about 30 programs and we studied each one to see how, uh, uh, you know, how, how uh, who, who is a decent program, how could we improve our, our, our compilers uh, to do better with typical programs, how could we improve our teaching to avoid errors. And so, and so uh, from that experience, I learned uh, that uh, not only the go-to statements are harmful, but assignment statements are harmful, if statements are harmful. <laughs> um, in other words, uh, you can make a case against any. <laughs> any, any, any statement be, being badly used. And so, the, so, so the, uh, I, I wrote this paper about uh, uh, structured programming with go-to statements, uh, uh, and, 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 in that, and I, sent, I sent drafts of that paper to uh, several dozen uh, leading computer scientists all around the world, including, of course, Dijkstra and, and Tony Hoare. Uh, and, and Tony Hoare uh, was coming up with his uh, uh, very important ideas about how to pro prove programs correct by what's now called Hoare logic and so on, and uh, 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 assertions. And, um, <clears throat> uh, and, and he, he, he had given a, a complete uh, uh, recipe for how to prove programs correct in the Pascal language except for the go-to statement. He, he, he didn't have, you know, I mean, he, he, he showed how to decently verify a Pascal program except for that, for that statement. Um, however, um, uh, then he, he, he visited Stanford and we got to talking about it and, and he saw, he, he, you know, he said, oh yeah, actually there's a very easy way to, to, uh, to to find the semantics of go-to statements using using Hoare logic, okay. he didn't. He he, he 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 said he was unhappy that that was true, but it was. But it, <laughs> okay. Now, um, and so in my paper, structured programming with go-to statements, I I tried to uh, examine uh, a, a, a few cases where actually. Uh, a, a properly used go-to statement is is much better than the alternative, and. Um, and uh, the, I think the question was, do I still uh, believe in go to? And and, I, and the answer is that it, it, I, I, I I did the uh, what would be considered the the worst sin uh, in this regard uh, in in, uh, in 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 several of the programs I wrote just this year, and uh, <laughs> and and the worst sin is not only to say go to, but to go to the middle of another loop. Okay. Um, and and well, you can you can find my programs on the web that that do this, and I have a little uh, you know, apology saying you know, uh, you know, check it out. It really is is really a great thing. So so um, uh, and and the context is is in backtrack programming where you make it where one part of the program makes decisions and does things, another part of the program undoes them. 
after you found out that you, you've already done what, all you wanted with the, first, uh, with, with the first case. And so I have a loop that, that like, um, uh, uh, d d deletes elements from a data structure. And then to undo that, uh, I, I, I put elements back into the data structure. And, and I, that's another loop for putting elements back in the data structure. But now, in the middle of the first loop, I find out that actually I better backtrack immediately because I, already, I just ran into a contradiction. I, I was deleting something from, from the data structure, but all of a sudden something went wrong, and I know that I'm going to get into trouble. So I, so I want to start backtracking right away. Uh, so I jump into the middle of the backtrack loop, <laughs> and it works. <laughs> What, what else would you do? You would have to you would have to set all kinds of uh, all kinds of, uh, of, of of signal parameters. You, you know, exit out. Then you say, okay, now I'm going to go backtrack. Oh, but this is a special kind of backtrack because because we haven't really fully deleted everything yet. We want to really start in the middle of of, of the middle of that. Uh, so, so you just write out the loops that, and you say go to from one to the other, and 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 you say. Uh, uh, Comment, seek newspaper for justification. <laughs> so you know, uh, after the go-to considered harmful was published, then there was a paper follow-up called go-to considered harmful considered harmful. <laughs> yeah, and you, could, you could write many papers uh, continuing this. Yeah. By the okay. way, one of the solutions to the go-to problem, did you know, was the come from statement? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question right here. You mentioned Feynman a lot. I wonder why you gravitated towards mathematics more than physics. Uh, just as I said, I didn't have an intuition for, for physics. I, 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 I could get an A-plus on the quantum mechanics exam, but I had no idea why the professor asked the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, this, this is actually about serial numbers more than, uh, than any of your CS work. Um, what, what inspired you to write it in terms of, of a dialogue between Bob and Alice and include all, like, and what, and what mistakes did you decide to include and in, in omit when you were writing it? Um, that's the question. What, what was the second part question? The, the, the second part was, so, you know, you include, uh, Bob and Alice make a plethora of mistakes and misconceptions in the book. Um, well, and were those all the misconceptions and, and you know, struggles you had when you were working out the theory, or yes. were, were those oh. the ones you just thought were important to include? Okay, so this question is about the, a, a little book that I, that I wrote called Surreal Numbers, that he has a, he has a yeah, yeah, look at that. <laughs> See, my wife drew the illustrations, uh, it, and uh, there's a, actually her, you know, there's, there's Allison and Bill on, on the front cover there. And, uh, okay, so uh, th this is a book that uh, 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 is sort of a litmus test for between computer science and mathematics. Uh, uh, math my mathematics uh, friends uh, he, uh, seem to like it a lot, and it's been translated into more than a dozen languages. Um, uh, uh, my computer science friend, why did I waste time on this? What, what, what's going on? Um, the, uh, the book, uh, uh, John Conway uh, told me about surreal numbers once uh, in, in Canada. I was, I, I was visiting the, uh, uh, the University of Calgary and at the same time he was there. And we had lunch together, and, and he filled a napkin with, the, with his theory that had not yet been published. Uh, and, and, I, and I took the napkin home with me, and I, I, I loved the theory very much. And at the end of the year, uh, I, was, I was on sabbatical, and uh, in the middle of the night, I woke up and I said, boy, that theory is so beautiful, I, I, I would really like to, uh, uh, to present it, uh, hopefully to high school students. Actually, it turned out it was more difficult than I expected, but, <laughs> but, but my original goal was to write this book high school students would enjoy. And I was in I was spending my sabbatical in 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 Norway, um, and and I I, I uh, 
uh, so, so I talked to my wife and I said, uh, uh, you know, Jill, you know, I'm working on the art of computer programming and, and, I, and this uh, has affected our, our marriage since, uh, since the second year of our marriage. Uh, <laughs> uh, but now I want to write another book. Uh, but, it, but, it, but it's okay, it's going to be a short book and I, and I can do it in a week. Um, and, uh, and, and so she, it, you know, she, she encouraged me and, 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 and I, um, and, uh, and so in January of, of uh, 1973, I, um, uh, uh, the, the arrangement was that I, I, would, I would rent a hotel, uh, a room in a, in a hotel in, in downtown Oslo, near where uh, Ibsen used to live. I thought that wouldn't hurt. Um, and, and, uh, and, and we always wanted, wondered what it would be like to have an affair in, in the hotel room. So, 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 so uh, she came and visited me twice that week. But, but, otherwise, <laughs> but otherwise, I spent the entire week you know, as, as a writer. And, and, I, and, and in, it, it, there was American students uh, 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 in the hotel that week, uh, and so at breakfast time, I, I I would listen to their conversation as much as possible in order to get dialogue similar to what would be the, done by the characters in my book. Okay, now now the, anyway, it's a long story, and I loved the, the experience because it was one of the richest weeks of my life. And at the end of the and and you know, I, I wrote the book in six days, and on the seventh day I rested. And, <laughs> and, 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 and the, the, the book was all, all coming to me almost like it was dictated. Uh, and at, at night, before I turned the light out, I, I would think of what the next couple of paragraphs would be. But the thoughts were so fast that I, that I wrote, I had time to write down only the first letter of every word. And, and then I would go to sleep. And then in the morning, I'd look it up and figure out what, and, and resume the writing. Um, seriously. And, and it was all flowing. And then on the seventh day, I, I, I was done with the book. And I, I wanted to write a letter to my secretary at Stanford, who was going to type it, and I couldn't write a sentence. I, it, it was just it was just gone. The whole the whole the whole thing. So, so this was this was an incredible thing. But you said, what, how did it, why did I decide to make it a dialogue? So, so, so I, I I wanted to present first of all the experience of of of, 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 of dis discovering a theory, and by, by a case study. And I and I had written uh, I, and and, and uh, Alfred Rainey had written had, had written a, 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 a nice paperback book called Three Dialogues in Mathematics, and they were like Socratic dialogues where they're people talking to each other, and and so this style of, of presenting something as as a, as, as a uh, you know back and forth. Uh, th throwing ideas together seemed like a, 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 a good way to do it, and, and then I wanted to put it in the, in, in the minds of, uh, of two people who were who were really finding out how cool it is to invent something new, mathematics. Uh, and so and and so I uh, uh, and I loved I loved Conway's theory, and, and but I had lost the napkin, uh, so so I didn't remember the axioms correctly. Uh, 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 um, but but as I was writing the book, I would try to imagine myself in 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 in, in the uh, position of of the two characters in my book, and and there is a male and a female character, and they have different uh, 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 strengths and weaknesses. It's, uh, that I, 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 I modeled the the female character after after, after my cousin at, at Urbana Champagne, uh, or my cousin's daughter, I mean, uh, and. Uh, uh, and so on. Uh, then, um, uh, uh, and and then I visited John Conway at his home uh, three months later. Uh, you know, we took a boat to, to uh, for, from Norway to England, and and I stayed with him for a few days. I found out that I had gotten some of the axioms wrong. So in the summertime, I had to rewrite uh, the book. It turned out with the correct axioms, it was it was a little easier. Uh, but but you're right that that that, that as I was working out, uh, out the theory, I would make mistakes, and so I, I purposely put those mistakes in the into the characters' uh, 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 reactions in the story, um, and so so it was an experiment that I that now 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 it, I, I view that book as something analogous to opera. You have opera is a is good music with a little bit of a story. 
and, and this book is good mathematics with a little bit of a story. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm really glad that, uh, that, that, that people have picked it that, people picked it up. I also understand why other people thought it was a great mistake for me to, uh, to, to, to do. A, I add one more thing. I, I, I sent, a, I sent a, a, a copy of the book to George Polia uh, uh, very proudly I, I, because he was so interested in teaching people how to do, how to do mathematics. And he said, well, you know, this is a really nice book, Don, but why didn't you use geometry instead of algebra? Uh, so uh, I had to tell you that, too. <laughs> OK. OK, are there some more questions? Yeah. Uh, so you have mentioned that um, you know, potentially all statements could be harmful. So what do you think about functional programming? Uh, 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 yeah, that could be harmful too. <laughs> um, but, but I, 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 I um, the question is really, what, why do I use C instead of, instead of, uh, uh, I forget what the what the what the, the proper letter is for the best functional programming language, but. Um, <laughs> Z, I guess, right? Um, <coughs> Sorry, let's say lambda. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, lam so, so lambda. <laughs> so, um, and, and well, of course, there there are lots of other functional programming languages now. But but uh, uh, the, the the reason is that uh, C works so, so so well for me. Uh, but if I but if I'm not allowed side effects, the in, input output becomes strange and and I, I don't see how I would have written tech for example in in, in a functional language so, so, so just in order to be pure about it I don't see that you know that, that's a more re religious thing than a, than trying to get answers um, and and so uh, you know I, I, I I'm, I'm all for programs that are easy to understand but I but I don't see why I should uh, uh, well, uh, handicap myself writing them uh, if, I, if, if I'm able to understand programs that are not in a functional language. <clears throat> yeah, that's, it, 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 it's good to get a uniform distribution. Can't watch. I think it's still under warranty. <laughs> Is there a question from that part of the world? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. So uh, what is in your opinion uh, is missing in deep learning for artificial intelligence now? What is my opinion about deep is, learning? Is missing in deep learning for artificial intelligence. For, for what, what, what deep learning misses? What does it miss? What is missing in it? What is missing in deep learning? Yeah, for, for, well, for artificial intelligence, yeah. Right, well, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, as deep learning to decide the uh, w w whether two sides of a formula, I mean, w whether an equation in fam family algebra is is an identity or not. Uh, you know, that's a recognition problem, uh, and so you you could you could train it on lots of formulas, but uh, but I wouldn't believe that any of the answers that come out of uh, out of a machine learning thing. Um, so uh, the thing is, uh, it, it it it's. It's, it's obviously wonderfully uh, uh, deep learning is wonderfully successful at solving at solving many problems that are, are of great importance and relevance in all kinds of you know in many different parts of life. 
uh, that, that we didn't uh, that, that we didn't have a good handle on before, uh, and uh, uh, and and to, to, to I don't want to knock, knock deep learning. In fact, it's so it, it's becoming so popular. I, I you know I don't know how many years it'll be before they change the name of our department to the Department of Deep Learning. <laughs> uh, uh, but but it doesn't. But but every time in history, every time somebody comes up with with a new paradigm that that has many successes, they start to think, oh, but this is now going to solve all the problems of everything of, of every other kind, and and so and so there's certainly a, a more than enough hype of that kind. Uh, but the but the but uh, of course, obviously, everyone knows that the big thing that deep learning is missing is. Uh, like, Telling us what it's learned, or, or, or how, you know, how does it make it? How can I, how, how can I believe that that what worked uh, today is going to work tomorrow? Because uh, because you, you you can't tell me how you made the decision. And so and, and so uh, you, you know we we have a good track record. You know this this, this thing has done, has has made better diag better diagnosis than uh, than all these great doctors. Uh, uh, but how do we know that it, that that's going to happen? All, uh, but it doesn't. We have no no way to reverse engineer the, and, and figure out uh, uh, what it's what it's really doing. And and, and of course the the, uh, uh, the the dangers then the more pe people rely on things that they don't understand, uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, the, the more terrible errors of just judgment that are that are going to occur. So I, you know, I, 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 the, the biggest thing that's missing is finding a way to, uh, to understand what these decision procedures are that are that, that are learned by, by by the learning method, uh, and, and so that we that we can get some 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 confidence in them, uh, 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 other than that they're handed to us uh, uh, as a black box. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, so I have a question. So I've heard that you are uh, very careful in writing your book, The Art of uh, Computer Programming. So my question is, uh, what do you think is the uh, critical difference between good papers or, and bad papers, or good work and bad work? What, what is the, the, the critical difference between good papers and bad papers, good work and bad work? Well, um, I. Uh, somehow, I, you, I can smell whether the paper was written from the heart or, for, or, or, or was written for to play academic games, uh, and and uh, uh, like like uh, for example, uh, take the papers of, of, of Leonard Euler. Uh, his papers were very impressive, but it wasn't. The, but he didn't write the papers to be impressive. He wrote the papers to say what impressed him. He 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 he, he, he impressed his readers by by the, the the stories that he was telling the theory the the, the theorems that that are true, uh, not not by how clever he was or by you know you know but 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 he was he he was he was telling something that that, that you, you sort of wanted to learn. Um, and not something that 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 you that you feel is doing uh, because it's uh, it's it's making money of some sort or something like that. There's this, there's this authenticity factor that's probably the most key thing to me. Thank you. Let's go on this side. I'm missing questions from here. I don't know if this is the left wing or the right wing, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, when you get stuck on a problem, like how long, how do you decide when to give up? Uh, <laughs> when I get stuck on a problem, how do I decide when to give up? Um, Uh, I would like to say I never get stuck on a problem, but that's uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, 
That isn't true. <laughs> No, no, uh, no. So, so I, of course, I've, I, I've often, and so, uh, in fact, uh, you know, it's, it used to be every night. Uh, you know, I couldn't go to sleep because I always thought five minutes more and I'd have the answer, um, and, and that would go on and on and on and on. Now, now I'm older, so I, you know, so I go to sleep anyway, and then I wake up in the middle of the night and maybe have an answer, um, but. Um, uh, so, so I, um, I, I have the, the, there's sort of a mental idea of, of uh, uh, w w w when you're working on a problem, uh, it, it's, it's like exploring a, a, a part of a universe, uh, and and you start in and and, and you and you don't know anything. Like I, you know, I just came to Waterloo, so I today I learned about King Street. You, know, you, <laughs> so, so you, you learn. A little bit about the subject area as, as, as you're studying it, and and as to first you make baby steps, and then you start making bigger steps, and and after after you're, you finally you, you, it's, your you, your brain is changing in order to, uh, to to see patterns that that you had no way of seeing the first week, and uh, and then you can start making giant steps, and now. Uh, you know, I, I, I often know I, I'm about ready to solve a problem if I can think about it while I'm swimming. Uh, at first, I have to fill lots of sheets of paper and scratch paper and throw it all away in order to in order to try stuff out and find out what's what what's false, uh, and learn a lot of, uh, about the territory at first. But then, uh, uh, you know, then I'm working on it, and uh, and and still, I, I don't I don't get. I don't get the answer. So um, once I feel that I, that I'm, I'm no longer t taking longer steps th than I was the previous week, th then then I, I figure, okay, it's time to put it away. Now, w w once or twice, actually, I, I did put it away, and um, it, it's true that the idea came to me the next day. Oh yeah, I should have done it. And, and one way to solve a problem is sometimes to, to imagine that, okay, you put it away, you decided, okay, uh, when I put a problem away, I usually, uh, I usually uh, send letters to, to several friends who I think uh, would be able to solve the problem and tell them how far I got, and, 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 and then I feel at least, at least somebody else uh, might, might, might be able to continue. Uh, but but uh, but it, it, in in two cases well, well at least the, the one case I remember was one of the papers on programming languages I, it was about the uh, technical question of of, of parenthesis uh, grammars uh, uh, suppose suppose you have a language a context free language uh, and uh, and you have uh, uh, certain pairs of characters like left parenthesis, right parenthesis, left bracket, right bracket. You have certain pairs of characters that are supposed to be like parenthesis. And suppose that every, every word in the language is balanced. It's properly nested with respect to all, all bracketing. Uh, now, the question was, could you always give a grammar for that language? Uh, it's a context-free language. Could you always find a context-free grammar that actually every production in the grammar was also nested? So that it was obvious then that the, the that the, the the words of the language would be nested. Okay, that was the problem I was working on, and I spent uh, I, I don't know how many weeks uh, uh, thinking that I almost had it, but finally I gave up. And and then uh, uh, the next day uh, it, it hit me exactly what I needed uh, to go. Uh, so so sometimes like uh, uh, you know maybe I should have given up earlier. I would have got the answer faster. Um, <laughs> But 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 if but, but sometimes uh, uh, the other the other trick is uh, imagine that somebody comes to you and says so and so has just proved uh, you know has just solved the problem and and you say oh I bet I know how he did it and, and, and some problems have actually been solved that way I mean it, actually it was a false rumor that the problem had been solved but but the mathematician had been thinking about it long enough. His brain had learned enough about the problem, and, and then he heard the, a false 
report, that problem was solved, and, and, and all of a sudden he said, he said oh yeah, that's, a, that's what it must have been. And, and so, so I, 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 I can't guarantee this is going to work, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but those, are the, 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 those are some uh, episodes of my own life that, that my, but, but I, uh, my friend Francis Yao described research very well. He said, she says, well, you work really hard on a problem, then, and then you solve it, and you, and you have this real high. And then a day later, you think of another problem. <laughs> so, so this reminds me of uh, Emma Lamer, who was once asked yes. what a typical working week was for her as a mathematician. And she, she replied, Monday tried to prove theorem, Tuesday tried to prove theorem, Wednesday tried to prove theorem, Thursday tried to prove theorem, Friday theorem false. <laughs> um, we have maybe time for one more question, so. So it's sort of a follow-up to your, the last question. Um, did you, uh, I understand, I, I just heard that uh, Professor Tompkins here at the school proved that P equals NP. Do you have any comment on how he might have done that? <laughs> I bet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, I suspect that he that he showed that there are only finitely many reasons why why p is unequal to np. <clears throat> uh, incidentally, a lot of people think that p must be equal to np. I've said this before. But people think that p must be equal to np because so many great computer scientists have tried to prove it and they failed. Uh, but also p is also equal to np because so many famous scientists have tried to disprove it and they've all failed. Well, we haven't gotten there yet, but let's congratulate uh, Professor Hughes on his